Right. And one of the stranger episodes of 2020 was that in the midst of a pandemic, certainly one of the worst since the 1950s, uh, we suddenly had vast nationwide protests in hundreds of different locations against uh, police violence. Now, the, the Latin expression non sequitur comes to mind. It seemed like a strange time to have that debate in the midst of uh, of a public health uh, emergency, but we did. And then what was even more surreal was that people who had been previously opposed to any kind of gathering, even quite small gatherings, uh, were suddenly entirely fine with the very large gatherings of people protesting uh, against the, the police and, and, by the way, protesting on distinctly spurious grounds, uh, given the relatively small uh, number of incidents uh, in uh, in which the the police use lethal violence against unarmed black suspects, but we'll leave that aside. I think it's fair to say that uh, it made no sense uh, to encourage or at least uh, tolerate those protests, given the guidelines that had already uh, had already been issued uh, and which seemed to apply to everybody else except the Black Lives Matter protesters. I wrote uh, in in April of last year that this was the greatest mistake in world history. I made it clear I wasn't saying the greatest evil. Clearly, there were there were greater evils, but I, I thought it was the greatest mistake. In and I want you to comment on Sweden. Do you think Sweden was the one country in the West to have handled it more properly? I think it would be. Wrong to say that Sweden did a brilliant job because uh, a number of the mistakes that were made in other countries were made in Sweden too. For example, they didn't protect the elderly in care homes, and so they got a significant number of avoidable deaths uh, there. Uh, However, they were right, I think, to say that you could control uh, the disease with uh, less drastic measures than, than lockdowns. Uh, that's to say uh, what in Sweden happened was that uh, public gatherings were, were limited, concerts and that kind of thing, uh, and there was uh, social distancing, but there wasn't a, a lockdown. So the economic uh, uh, impact was distinctly less. Uh, I don't think the poster child is, is Sweden, though, because ultimately I think the real success stories were, were countries that I mentioned already, Taiwan and South Korea, which which dealt with this problem in a smart way. And I want to just address one issue that often comes up when, when one discusses this. You know, their use of, uh, of technology, and particularly their use of contact tracing, so that they were quickly able to find out when an infected person had been in, in contact with other people. I heard again and again last year from the big tech companies as well that we couldn't do this in the United States because it would be a violation of our civil liberties. And I thought that was wrong for two reasons. One, because in Taiwan they've been very careful to make sure uh, that the kind of data that they used was anonymized and couldn't be used for any other purpose. I mean, they, they have thought about this issue because they care a lot about their liberties in Taiwan. After all, they are threatened by the People's Republic of China on a daily basis, but also because being locked in your own home under house arrest, as people in California, New York, and many other states were, is hardly a triumph of civil liberty. And if the choice for me is between having some contact tracing that works that and being locked great. in my own home, yes. I'll, I'll take the tra- I'll take the uh, contact that's, tracing. That's a very interesting point. Back in a moment with Neil Ferguson. The book is up at my website. <laughs> 